It's full of stars. Why, this would be a limited edition uh, Boing Boing t shirt designed by uh, Coop. I like watching Boing Boing TV. Hi, I'm Phil Terrell, reporting from Maker Faire, um, senior editor at Make Magazine. And one of the more interesting things I get to do uh, when I get a slight break from helping to run Maker Faire is find things that uh, I think are not only interesting to me, but interesting to everyone out there. Star, uh, maybe you can tell me a little bit about what you have here. It's called Fuzzy Logic. Yes. Um, I love showing people how cool, fun, and creative electronics can be. They're really large, fuzzy, friendly versions of standard electronic components. I'm a big fan of uh, learning about circuits. I have a circuit with a light, a switch, and I can make it brighter and dimmer, just like that. So if you wanted to learn electronics, you could take all these plushy things and use your refrigerator to yeah. prototype and on a breadboard. Or any whiteboard. Uh, they're magnetic, they'll just stick right on. These type of soft circuits are probably safe. You can bring them absolutely anywhere. Definitely. Uh, uh, they're airport friendly. I brought them here in my carry-on and I was fine. Yeah, you've got to be careful at airports, from what I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely do. So uh, my name is Ed Baffey and I run the Boston Fab Lab. And Fab Labs are basically uh, places, uh, spaces where people can come and get access to machinery. Um, and our Fab Lab actually runs on an open access policy where people can walk in off the street and get access to a number of machines. Tell me a little bit about how you use laser cutters at the Fab Lab. Right, so the laser cutter can be used as just an etcher, um, you know, to etch uh, designs on products or whatever. Uh, but it can also be used to cut uh, three-dimensional parts from two-dimensional parts. And uh, when you have people come in, how are they doing their designs? What are applications are they using? Right, so we tend to use a lot of open source applications. So, uh, you know, there's a free version of um, Illustrator called Inkscape. Or, an open office draw. They can also bring in designs that they did in you know, commercial packages and get them out to the machines as well. What's happened over the last year or so is uh, as more and more people bought these laser cutters, uh, Epilog and the other laser companies, I think looked at the demand and decided, well, you know, we can introduce even a, a cheaper laser cutter. So uh, when I got one, everything was $20,000 and now they're around $8,000. This actually uses uh, an etchant, and when you do your design, you etch black black onto it. So this one has a cow. It says moo. So when you have um, something like a Mac or an iPhone or an iPod that's uh, mass manufactured, there's not a lot of personalization. So all these examples, I think, is a really neat glimpse in the future. When you'll have one of these in your home, and you'll decide, oh, you know what? I just don't like the way my Mac looks anymore. I'm going to decide to download a, a new design off the web. In most major cities, I'm talking about like the 10 or so major markets, there is a laser cutter near you. So uh, go online, download the template, search around on Google, and uh, you, know, you too could be sporting a, a new Mac with uh, an updated design very soon. One of my favorite people in the world is here, Mitch Altman. Uh, Mitch, you've invented lots of things. Right now we're in the Brain Machine Pavilion. Tell me exactly what a Brain Machine is. You have one here in your hand. Yeah, Brain Machine is um, a do-it-yourself project that I made, uh, wrote it up in Make Magazine. Anyone can build this. It synchronizes your brain to a really relaxing, nice meditation state. And what makes it very fun is that you hallucinate colors and patterns along the way. I see a swirling mandala that's changing shapes and colors. The controlling software for this, it works on a computer chip. I made it easy to use because I hacked it from a, a kit that's ready-made, made by Lady Ada. A uh, very easy to uh, make kit for beginners. That makes this kit easy to build because I hacked it from that. You can control the, um, you can program it uh, through this programming port. And with free open source uh, controlling firmware, uh, anyone can download it and hack it. I, I documented it very well for people to hack. We're always trying to perceive uh, the outside world, what we think of as the outside world. Sometimes we're more and less successful at that. When we can't really make sense of the outside world, your brain can't handle that, so it comes up with something. In this case, it's trying to make sense of these blinking lights covering your whole field of vision. It can't make sense of it, so it draws from your subconscious, and everyone sees something different. Can you, uh, can you turn oh, me on I'll here? Turn you on. Right. Are your eyes closed? Yep. 
How's that? All right. It's full of stars. <laughs> lots and lots of stars. <laughs> <laughs> Is it pleasant? Yeah. Cool. Or terrifying. I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> My name is Lise Lotoff and I wrote the pilot script and hence was the creator of the MacGyver TV series and uh, and I guess you guys being big fans of MacGyver came looking for me when you started Make Magazine and wanted to know if I'd be open to maybe uh, doing a sort of MacGyver challenge like column called Makeshift and, uh, and I said that it sounded like fun and that I would be willing to do it so now uh, Every, uh, every issue of Make, we try and come up with some kind of a challenge for people who are, uh, you know, who want to think about that. We create a situation or a problem or you're trapped somewhere and here's what you've got to solve a problem and see if you can think like MacGyver and find a way out of the situation. How do you feel about the tens of thousands of people who say, oh, I got started in electronics or science or something because of MacGyver? It's really become sort of part of the language and, uh, and part of the culture and I, I you know, what can you say except I think it's great. Now, I had a rumor there might be a MacGyver film. Can you tell me when it's going to come out so I can start lining up in front of a movie theater well, now? Well, it's it's in the very early talking stages. We're just still working on the on the story ideas and the script, so I can't give you a date. I'm willing to do whatever. Maybe I can be an extra. I'll, I'll shave my head. I'll be the guy who sends MacGyver out. Okay, you, you make sure to send me your number and we'll get back to you. <laughs>